Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, we're gonna build this. This is a hydroponic system for dragon fruit. Now, it's a wicking system that's based on the rain gutter grow system. However, the pots are a little more complicated than that and involve wicks and drainage that necessarily caters to the environment that dragon fruit like. That being a really well drained, only slightly moist soil environment. Let's get to building the system. But first I'd like to explore with you other people's effort to grow dragon fruit hydroponically. As this isn't like a fresh idea or anything. Basically, if you have a plant, people have tried to grow it hydroponically. The reason I'm trying my hand at every plant I can get my hands on is because I wanna come up with new systems to grow them hydroponically. And the best way to figure out what the plant likes is to build on other people's knowledge of the subject. So let's have a look at what's out and about on the internet to gain some knowledge that we can then utilize into a system design that will make the most of growing dragon fruit hydroponically. The first place I usually start is a simple Google search and generally maximum yield is right at the top of that search. This is because they've got their search engine optimization nailed. The articles tend to give a surface level view of what can be learned on the internet uh, without going into any real deep knowledge. Basically, this article outlines the fact that dragon fruit likes timed irrigation cycles and systems like Dutch buckets would generally be ideal for dragon fruits that they like an EC of between 1.4 to 1.0 and that their pH is between 5.8 and 6.0. It also outlines the generalized growing knowledge such as the drainage is essential, uh, expanded clay, gravels, perlite, basically anything to drain the water away from sitting on the roots uh, is essential when growing dragon fruit. And this is why I love hydroponics. This picture you're seeing in front of you is exactly the opposite of what you've just been told. It's a deep water culture dragon fruit. And here's the guy that grows it to tell you all about it. Hello, hi, I'm Adam Dixon from Phytoponics. And um, we make commercial hydroponic growing systems. But on the side of that, uh, I like to test and grow exotic plants because it's, it's my hobby and one of my passions. So tucked away in the corner of our commercial research facility, uh, we've got some dragon fruit growing. Here is some fruit. This one's a couple of days from ripening. Uh, yeah, very exciting. We've got dragon fruit, vanilla, and uh, uh, rambutan uh, in our system. So this isn't product placement. This is just my interest in how they're growing the dragon fruit hydroponically. Essentially, I jumped through their website and found out that their system is made up of these deep water culture plastic tubes, I guess you could call them. They're supported either by inflatable edges or these bars that hang the internal plastics and suspend water around the roots in which the plants are grown in a deep water culture environment, which is, well, I mean, super interesting and a really fantastic idea, especially since the cost of freight for an inflatable system such as this would be negligible. How robust the system is would be interesting. It looks like some of the systems have end plates which are made of solid plastic, uh, which then suspend the bags or um, channels over a longer distance with uh, reinforcement. And then some of the systems are actually inflatable, um, relying on the edges, sort of like an inflatable kiddie pool relies on the inflatableness of the sides to keep the uh, water from escaping the containment of the pool. Super interesting stuff and it's really insightful to know that dragon fruit will tolerate a DWC hydroponic environment. Okay, now for something a little bit more traditional. I looked at a ton of different growing styles 
for hydroponic and standard growing styles for dragon fruit. And this was one of my favorite videos and, and you'll actually see a lot of influences in my build from this video. All these videos will be linked below and you can check them out in your own time if you like. This method involves using sandy soil to allow drainage for the growing medium that the dragon fruit is in at the top. Now this is a cow manure and cocoa peat grow medium for this video. However, I'll be changing that for our hydroponic requirements. You'll also notice the 100 millimeter piping. Now there is a method on this channel and a reason why I'm going with 100 millimeter piping and it has to do with supporting the dragon fruit later in the growth stages of its life cycle. So to begin with, let's find a donor cactus and we can start taking cuttings in preparation for our system build. So here is our donor dragon fruit and obviously it's uh, definitely outgrown this pot because it sent a root through one of the holes in the bottom and into the garden bed below uh, that it was in. So I'm just gonna remove that root, then we can divide it up. All right, so I'm just gonna go for the healthy bits. All these new shoots here, I'm gonna cut them off at the skinniest part and then we'll dry them out. So I'm gonna use a nice sharp pair of secateurs and we'll just cut it right where it joins the main cactus. Like that. Okay, so now that we've got all our cuttings laid out, I'm gonna let them sit for a week and they'll seal up on the ends where I've cut them and then we can plant them into our substrate. So I'm just gonna put these in a dry place out of direct sunlight. Through the magic of YouTube, it's now been a week and it's time to set up the rain gutter grow system that I've decided to grow these dragon fruit in. You can find instructions on how to build this rain gutter grow system linked in the top right hand corner now. I'm also using 3D printable end caps that I designed myself, which are available for you to download the file and 3D print on my Patreon account. So I'm setting up the system and you can see that I'm actually going to be drilling holes in the bottom of the buckets right in the center. I recommend not doing this as I'm going to change the design of the system halfway through this video um, due to the way that I laid out the system to begin with not turning out quite the way that I wanted it to turn out. This has to do with the placement of the wicks in the system and the way that the dragon fruit is being held up in the center by the 100 millimeter piping. So for the dragon fruit, for the support poles that are gonna go down the center of the pot, I'm gonna use these 100 millimeter pipes. The way this system is going to work is it's gonna wick up from the middle net cup that's in the bottom of these pots up through the middle of the pipe. I'm gonna fill up this pipe with, uh, I think just cocoa, um, because it doesn't need any extra oxygenation. I just need it to wick really well. So, um, just cocoa in the middle of this pipe. At 20 centimeters, I think I'm gonna go up 20 centimeters because the information I could find on the maximum capillary draw of water is 30 centimeters. Um, so I want it to wick just enough so that it gets the nutrient and water to the roots, but at a very low amount. So I'm gonna cut this pipe uh, 20 centimeters from this first hole, because this is a recycled pipe, this is from my um, pumpkin NFT. To support the pole, I'm going to have uh, just under 20 centimeters of river stone to hold it up. All right, let's cut the poles to size and we can add them into our system. So I'm gonna cut the poles to be one meter long. <clears throat> so I ended up making a few mistakes at the start of the build, and this is one of them. The pipes ended up being 1.5 meters long. So adjust your pipes accordingly. Just hang in there, I promise things are gonna get better. Okay, and that cup's in, and we can just put our pipe down over the top of it, and now I can fill around it with river stone. And just before I top that stone off, just going to fill it up, fill up the pipe with cocoa so that 
when I fill up the last bit, we don't get stones going into it. Make sure it's gone all the way down into that net cup. Oh, we've blown all the way through. Well, that's not gonna work. <sighs> oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so I'm making some modifications on the fly. Um, I'm now going to make from two holes on either side of the bucket and use some tubing that's not the centerpiece, uh, which is not gonna be buffeted around um, to raise the nutrients through the cocoa up 20 centimeters. I'm just gonna cut these to 20 centimeters. It just means that I have to put more holes in my rail that I've already prepared, uh, but that's okay. Uh, I've just moved the inside, the outside ones in, and I'm just putting two extra holes here and I'll cover this hole um, with an end cap when I put the main PVC pipe in. Okay, so I'm just cutting this 90 millimeter pipe into 200 millimeter sections. I'm gonna sit in here, protecting it from the stones, and then we'll fill around them, and that will have just pure cocoa going all the way down to that net cup. The stones are there for drainage, um, so that if it rains, the dragon fruit's roots won't get waterlogged. All right, so I'm gonna be a bit smart about it this time. <laughs> so I'm gonna fill up the net cups first. There, they're ready to wick. But, so they're in, and then fill up these. That's our wicking column. We'll do the same over here. Now, we can put in our center pole, like that. I'm now just gonna fill the center of the pipe, as well as around the other two pipes. And we should end up with something like that. Now I'm gonna go along and do the same for the rest of the pots. So now all of our pots are ready. I'm going to put a little mound of cocoa on each end of the wicks that we've made so that it will wick up and out into the less cocoa saturated media that I'm gonna add next. So the next media I'm gonna add in is cocoa and scoria. An inert media, kind of similar to clay balls. It just has a ton more surface area. And the reason I'm adding this in, this doesn't hold excesses of water and it will allow the substrate to drain, hopefully, and give the dragon fruit the ideal growing conditions. This is your scoria. There's still a lot more cocoa than I'd like in that, so I'm gonna go two parts scoria to one part cocoa. We can just add that into our pots. I've added on about 100 millimeters of uh, the two parts scoria, one part cocoa, and now I'm going to do that all the way along, and then we're going to step up the scoria again as we get towards the top and where we're planting in the dragon fruit. And this will allow the roots, if we give it a gradient of media, this will allow the roots to choose where they're comfortable being in the sense of how moist the media is. So I'm gonna go along and fill these up with two parts scoria, one part cocoa, and then we'll add in maybe three parts scoria, one part cocoa. And then we can look at where we wanna plant in that media. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since I filled these up with stones and stuff. I just filled the reservoirs, uh, which is the rain gutter grow system channels, with a watering can. And I wanted to make sure that it held water at both ends and that the wicking action was happening from below. And I can show you that now. So if we have a look here, you can quite visibly see the wicking action happening from 20 centimeters below where the wicks are. If we look at this one over here, there's 
there's definitely a difference in the color of the cocoa that's coming up through the pipe as opposed to the cocoa that's outside of the area of the pipe. So this wicking action will continue up through the cocoa, especially once the capillary action actually is drawn up. So once I wet all this cocoa media that's on top, the wicking will happen more easily. Um, the reason it's taken a couple of days for this to wick up to this level is purely because there was only dry cocoa in there and I didn't wet it down. So I've got the same happening over in this bucket. You can see the wicking happening from below the pipe and especially over in this bucket. Now this one I've cleared out the pipe so you can have a better idea of the wicking action and you can see that is very moist cocoa. So it's really wet down there. It's exactly really what we didn't want for our dragon fruit. We didn't want the cocoa to be this moist. Um, I'm looking for the cocoa to be about this moist and then having a gradient of moisture come out from these two wicks to where I'm gonna plant the dragon fruit, which is going to be not above the wicks, but I'm gonna plant them on either side here and here. And the reason I'm doing that is so that the roots can grow down to the gradient of moisture that comes up from the wicks and they can find their perfect moisture gradient wherever they feel comfortable within that medium. Okay, so now I know that the wicks are working. I'm gonna fill up the three containers in front of me with the same medium that I filled up with the three containers behind me, which was two bags of scoria to one bag of cocoa peat. And then on the top layer, I'm actually gonna do three bags of scoria to one bag of cocoa peat, just to reduce the amount of wicking that happens all the way up through the media. Okay, we can now plant our dragon fruit cuttings. Now it's been about a week since I made these cuttings and as well as these cuttings, because I'm actually not sure what kind of dragon fruit plant this is. And there's two distinct flowering types. There's one that will self pollinate and there's one that requires the pollination from another plant. So I didn't want to risk that this was the one that requires the pollination from another plant where the two clones or cuttings won't pollinate with each other. Uh, so I also purchased some dragon fruit stock from a nursery nearby who posted them out to me. I just wanna show you on all of the cuttings, the cutting has dried and sealed. Ow, 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 that's a prick. Ah. And here's a look, this is the description. And to plant the tube stock, I'm not gonna bother removing any more dirt um, than what just falls off immediately as I take it out of the tube. And I'm just gonna plant it straight into the Coco Scoria mix up to the point where the tube ends. So pretty simple. Pop it in here. Careful of those bricks. Oh, that's lovely. See how well rooted that is? Okay, just put that in there. I'm gonna plant it with the concave side to the pipe so that when I pull it taut, look at that. It's like it was meant to be piped. <laughs> All right. And to secure it to the post, I'm just gonna use this soft plant rubber tie. Come behind it. I'll just do this. Straight around like that. Now, what I've realized while doing that is if you're gonna do both sides, you may as well tie them both at the same time. <laughs> so maybe do alternate one tie and then the next tie. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm gonna go and do the same planting for each of these and then we'll put in our cuttings. Well, that one came out and it hasn't rooted at all. That's okay. I'm just gonna treat it like the other cuttings. It's actually not really impressed with the quality of that cutting, to be honest. Um, but you should be able to tell by the top where there's no new growth and it's not really, I'm gonna take that top off as well. I'm just not happy with that. So hopefully this will shoot out, but yeah, not really tube stock. 
I'll do the same thing that I'm gonna do with the cuttings for this one. All I'm gonna do for the cuttings, so it's really simple. I don't even need a shovel. I'm going to find um, the side that I want against the pole. That's the one I want. And I'm just gonna stick it in to our grow media. And then I can tie it up. There we go. I'm just gonna not even really cover it. I just wanna make that nice and level around it. So I'm just gonna set up the rest and we can water them in. Okay, so all our dragon fruit is planted and ready to go. I'm actually not going to add in the float valves to this system today. The reason being is I'm going to do a huge expansion on this area in the very near future. Um, lots of exciting systems to come. Just to start the dragon fruit, they really don't need much water and nutrient at all. So I'm going to water in a watering can of half hydroponic nutrient, full strength, 6.5 pH, 2.4 EC, uh, and then water that down to half with just plain water. And then I'm just going to water them in. So I don't really need to worry how much I put on here because the way that I've designed uh, the media in this system is even if I overwater or it gets too much rain, any excess should just drain straight through the cocoa, which won't take up any more than it needs to take up. It will never get waterlogged. And then straight through the scoria as well, and then through the river stone. And ideally, the excess won't travel down through those pipes, the wicking pipes, and the excess will actually just drain out the bottom holes around the edges, as well as the bottom holes in the pots. If you wanna make sure you've got free draining pots and you've only got the edge holes, you can add in holes to the bottom. And hopefully this will mean the nutrient solution in the bottom pipe reses won't be diluted when it rains a lot. So I'll just water these in. Fantastic. They're all watered in and I'm going to manually feed the systems from the bottom periodically until I have this full area set up with hydroponic systems and I get my hand on an IBC that I can feed all of the systems from. The reason I've actually planted the dragon fruit in this area is because it's a very shady area. So dragon fruit are a subtropical cactus. However, they don't particularly like full sun. Uh, they will cope with it, but they do prefer partial shade. So I've taken that into consideration when I chose this spot. Luckily for me, I live in a pretty hot area that stays humid and doesn't really get below freezing throughout the whole year. We do get fairly cold winters, but it rarely dips below zero. And the summers tend to be hot and humid. They can get dry, but I think these guys will be absolutely fine in my climate. I'm really interested to see how they respond to hydroponic nutrients. As I showed you at the start of the video, there's a lot of experimenting happening with them in hydroponics and they cope really well, uh, even in a completely wet environment like DWC and NFT and stuff like that. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Plenty of updates to come on these guys and everything else. So if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe for those updates, and I'll see you next time. Happy hydroponicking.